employing nanotechnology, we are going to use the Fugo Plasma Blade to ablate resistance-free plasma capsulotomies. As you can see here, we're just gliding along the surface of the anterior capsule, right along the pupillary margin, in a quick, controlled, and resistance-free fashion, producing a beautiful capsulotomy that published data has demonstrated has capsule margins comparable in strength to the capsule erexus, and histologic sections have demonstrated lack the charring and burning um, as uh, seen in diathermy units that are used in Europe and Japan. Here's a second patient. We're going to show you that even in a straightforward uh, patient, cataract, uh, things can go wrong. Here we first make a tiny capsulotomy. We can make concentric capsulotomies, and that's what we're doing here. We're spiraling out. But right about 6 o'clock, right here, we accidentally come off of the surface of the anterior capsule. And as you can see there, from 6 to 8 o'clock, it's discontinuous. It's not continuous. And right there, I went back, and in two or three seconds, as you can see, right there, I repaired that. And I replaced and made a very continuous and uh, controlled uh, capsulotomy opening with the, with the Fugo Plasma Blade. Here we're walking along the iris again, and this gives you tremendous options because here, especially in small pupils where you can go up under the iris and actually ablate out of surgeon visualization, then impale the nucleus and pull it up in the iris plane using the nucleus as a, uh, a pupil expander. We're going to take the phaco tip here. Here we have the phaco tip, and we use vacuum, suction the nucleus, pull it out of the lens bag, and I'm going to take the uh, visco cannula in my left hand to push the uh, posterior capsule back out of the field of action. Now I'm going to take the cracker, and I crack the nucleus. And now in the iris plane, we can crack the nucleus and remove debris with the phaco tip. This is easy. Here we're performing a quick, simple, and absolutely comfortable anterior capsulotomy. Isn't this pleasant? Go at your own pace. However, this device shows its true colors in those really difficult cases. I'm going to show you a floppy iris syndrome patient that would have been a nightmare to do with capsule erexis. Here's the patient. I was really uncomfortable the way I was sitting, the way I was positioned, and so I'm going to do just the superior half of the anterior capsule. You don't have to do the complete capsulotomy all in one sitting. That's one of the beauties of this device. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to perform the temporal, inferior temporal section. And then I'm going to go over and perform a capsulotomy on the infronasal section. Here the capsulotomy tip is up under the iris. And it's not that difficult to do this procedure. I just performed a very large capsulotomy under this very limited size pupil. So it gives me really great capability. Here I'm using the phaco tip to impale the nucleus. I'm pulling the nucleus up out of the lens bag and I have the viscoelastic cannula in my left hand and I'm squirting visco to push the posterior capsule back and have that nucleus sit on a mound of viscoelastic. As I'm breaking, I just cracked the nucleus in the iris plane. This makes it really simple to manage this difficult floppy iris syndrome patient. Now I can crack it and manipulate it right in the pupil. Let's place a tiny capsulotomy right in the center of this anterior capsule. There it is, complete and perfect. And now we're going to go and spiral out of this initial capsulotomy and make a concentrically larger anterior capsulotomy. This, is, this would be very difficult with a 
capsular excess, but it shows you the capability. Now we're going to plasma ablate that rim. Do you see it right there? We just plasma ablated the rim of capsule up to right in front of the pupil margin, and now we're going to actually ablate capsule right up under the uh, pupil. Now we're going further up under the pupil and going to ablate anterior capsule. A healthy hydrodissection, as seen here, is then followed by phaco emulsification. We then use phaco vacuum to impale the nucleus and then gently rock it and pull it out of the lens bag. We then inject viscoelastic with our left hand, as seen there on the left, behind the nucleus in order to push the posterior capsule back and hold the nucleus up in the pupil where we can take a cracker as seen here and crack the nucleus wherein we can then phaco emulsify this uh, in a controlled fashion. Here's another case where we're going to just glide over the anterior capsule forming a plasma ablation capsulotomy in a very controlled graceful and pleasant manner. This is what we mean when we say that this technology puts the surgeon in complete control. Okay, here's another floppy iris syndrome cataract that uh, we can show you can be managed in a very straightforward and safe fashion using fugoplasma ablation. We stretch the nucleus a little put some heavy visco in, and as you can see here, we're making a large capsulotomy. We first walked along the pupil. Now we're actually ablating the capsule up under the pupil, up under the iris. It really is easy to do after your first 25 cases. This changes the whole paradigm for the surgery. Why? Because we can now impale this with the phaco tip, rock it, and pull it out of the lens bag. That's what we're doing here. We're pulling it up into the pupil and then we're going to take a viscoelastic cannula as we did in previous videos. We'll do that with this uh, left-handed cannula and we'll squirt a nice mound of viscoelastic back to push the posterior capsule back and hold this uh, nucleus up in the pupil where it will act as an iris expander so that we can slowly nibble away at this nucleus. So the objectives of these maneuvers thus far have been to create a situation that you're looking at right now, namely having that phaco tip be able to attack the nucleus the entire nucleus right in the center of the pupil. This is beautiful. This way you're under control. It's safer because that nucleus is sitting on a mound of viscoelastic, which we previously placed in. The posterior capsule sitting way back. And we're using that side probe to move that nuclear bulk around and placing the section that we want to attack, just as we are here, right in the center of the pupil. This is great. I feel good. I'm under control. I'm doing a much better job, and it certainly makes my blood pressure and my pulse rate much lower because I'm in control of this surgery. Here is what we refer to as the plasma blade swan maneuver, wherein we use plasma ablation to gracefully glide over the anterior capsule and to produce a perfect, clean, quick, and strong anterior capsulotomy.